Hey guys, Chris from Pro Bowl Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a sub and amplifier install in this 2019 Volkswagen Jetta. In this install, we're going to show you how to install a sub and amp to a factory radio. Let's get started. Now, the first thing that we need to do is run power from our battery here up front to supply power to the amplifier that we're going to place in the trunk on our battery here. This is the positive side. We're going to run a power wire from this post here through an inline fuse through the firewall and run it all the way to the back of the car. So the first thing that's always safe when you're doing with anything electrical is let's go ahead and remove the negative off the battery here and we're going to build a fuse holder and begin running our wire through that firewall. Now the best way to pass through the firewall is we have the automatic version. If you have the GLI with the manual transmission, this is generally where the clutch um, pedal will pass through the, the, uh, the firewall there. But since we have the automatic, all we have is a rubber boot instead. So that makes it nice and easy for us to pass wire through. If you have the manual here, you can drill your own hole or find another unused grommet here in the firewall that looks similar to that. We're gonna pass a four gauge wire through that up to the battery and begin um, mounting our fuse holder. This video is sponsored by NVX Audio, your location for high quality car audio components. Use coupon code PBAI to get 10% off your purchase. The parts that we're going to use for this install, we're using, first of all, an LC2i. This helps us restore some of the base roll-off that's commonly found in these Volkswagens. This is our line-out converter that'll take signal that we're going to pull from the factory radio, feed it in here, and output corrected signal from the base output to our amplifier. So we're using this. We're going to install one of these. We have some RCAs. Now we have some bulk wire here, but if you pick up an amplifier wiring kit, um, it'll actually come with all the bits and pieces wiring wise that you'll need for your install. But we picked this up just so we can enhance the sound quality of our amplifier. The amp that we're going with is this um, NVX 750 watt amplifier. We have an unboxing on the channel. If you wanna check out this amp more in detail, we'll throw a link down in the description. And we have our fuse and some odds and ends. We're using wire ferrules. So we're gonna run this through the firewall to the battery through an inline fuse. All right, so we pop that grommet out and what we did is we have a hanger here that pops out in the engine bay. So we're gonna use this hanger to feed this four gauge wire through there. Now further along, we've popped that grommet out, put a little hole through it so that it seals up and around the wire. So as we pull that back in, we can put the grommet back in and it maintains that seal so we don't have any moisture coming into the cabin of the car. So we're gonna go on the other end and begin pulling this wire through. Just like that. So with the negative off the battery, we ran it, went ahead with that wire, ran it up and around. Now, what we've done here is actually, I just had a, uh, some ABS plastic there just so our fuse holder isn't completely flopping around. Um, we're gonna, we mounted our fuse holder to that existing bolt using some ABS plastic. Now for our positive side on the terminal, a lot of the time, the bolt shears off when you try to take it off and that happens just because there is um, a crease in the bolt prohibiting the nut from coming all the way off. And so if it breaks off, we ended up replacing our uh, bolt with another bolt and a nut. We put a lock washer on there as well and it's nice and firmly on there. So we have a good, good connection. And then from here, we went through a ring terminal, four gauge ring terminal, and then we stripped this end and actually put a four gauge wire ferrule on there just to keep the wire nice and clean and use some heat shrink. And our fuse holder will go there. And then on this end of the wire, we're gonna go ahead and also put a ferrule and then we can mount our fuse holder in its place and continue running our wire to the trunk. Okay, so our wire comes in. Now, depending on your amplifier wiring kit you choose to go with, the fuse holder may differ. With our NVX fuse holder, we got that in. It uses a mini ANL fuse. And uh, with those wire ferrules on each side plus heat shrink, makes a nice solid connection. We'll just need to tighten that up and it just clips right in place. And then we'll pull the excess wire back through the firewall just so we don't have a ton of extra cable here underneath the hood. Okay, so we got our fuse holder all mounted 
and our wire run all the way through. At this point, besides reconnecting the negative once we're all ready to go, we're done up underneath the hood. Let's continue running the power wire. So up underneath the dash here, we all went ahead and reinserted our rubber grommet there. Now we're left with this wire, which we need to run to the back area here. Now we want to run it underneath these factory panels. We have to get this guy on off. And the best way to get that off, there's actually, if you get a flathead screwdriver on the inside of this clip is a little release here. So as you pull this down, you can get to that little clip to release it. The handle comes off, then you um, expose the screw, which allows you to take this entire piece off for a nice easier run down along the kick panel to the rear of the car. So you see this little teeny little clip that you can pull on out there. And then pull the clip out. And again, when you pull this back, it's just up underneath using a flathead screwdriver. You can actually get up underneath like that, pull out that clip, and it releases this guy here. When you do that, this comes on off. It exposes this little clip here using a flathead. You can actually get up underneath. Getting a flathead here. There we go. Don't lose those three pieces. Once that's out, now this panel can start getting loose here. But before we do that, we have to take this guy on off and we'll show you how to do that. We begin loosening this panel to run up our wire through uh, to the back area. Just pop this off just enough so we can tuck our wire through. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and just tuck, use the tuck method. Make sure we get that wire up underneath all these panels. Okay, so what we've done is we just popped this panel off, same principle here, just held on with clips here. Once that's out of the way, we actually removed our back seat, but we continued this car wire up. Now we're gonna go up under the seat and mount our amplifier on the back of the seat. We have already prepped the wire end here. Obviously this is not live because the negative is off the battery, but we put a wire ferrule on the end of our wire. And uh, just to indicate that it is positive, we put a little um, red boot on there as well, and that'll go into the positive side. We've already started our negative. Same thing with a wire ferrule um, over a four gauge wire. We put that in there and tighten that down. That runs all the way down. And we put our negative right here on the seat belt bolts. Now you'll notice that the paint up underneath the bracket, as well as on the bracket itself, we used a wire brush and clean that up. So there is no resistance there. Nice and clean, and that's all ready and polished up. We used a copper ring terminal to run that four gauge up into the um, negative side of our amplifier. So we're gonna do the same with our positive side here, um, just so we can get that all bolted up. This, if you're wondering how to get that out, it's a Torx bit that you'll need, and it's a T50 Torx bit. We used an impact to get that out. If you don't have that bit, that makes it really difficult to remove that. So you can find another seat belt bolt or another bolt. The next thing we need to do is mount our LC2Y and start running speaker wire up to behind the radio. Okay, since our power and ground is now run here, remember we had our ground right there up underneath. If you're wondering how we got this panel off, it just held on with three clips. It pops right on out. It's really nice and easy. Um, we got our panels all put back together. That's all good to go. Wires all nice and clean. So we pop this down. So we got our power ground all hooked up. Now since we're doing an LC2i, got that mounted as well. And on this LC2i, it has a power and a ground, a constant and a ground, and a remote out. And this is set to um, generate our remote turn on, and we've enabled it with this little um, little jumper here. Read the instructions on this if you're wondering how to set that up, but 
our remote out comes, that blue wire comes out, goes to the remote in on the amplifier. And then we have a red and a black that we've also jumped into with a positive and negative on the amplifier. So that is providing the LC2i power and ground. And an remote out will go into the amplifier to trigger it on once it senses that there's something playing on the speaker wire. Now, speaking of the speaker wire, we that is our signal input from the car. So we're gonna run this to a location where we have sound or signal. We're gonna do that behind the radio. And then on this side, I just made some really short RCAs. Now you can buy really short RCAs. Um, you could probably do it with a, a one footer, just going between the output of the um, line out converter and the input of their amplifier, just like so. So the nice thing is this will fold out of the way. Everything's nice and bolted down. Now, as I mentioned before, this is our input for the LC2i. We need a snack signal from the car from the factory radio. And we have really, really long wire that we're gonna go up to the passenger side and tap behind the radio for that signal. So essentially here, signal will come in up into this LC2i and then it'll output into our amplifier. And then we have our um, speaker output and that goes to our sub box. All right, so with the wire run to this point for our signal, we have to go from this kick panel up to the radio here in the dash. Now the radio is kind of a chore to get out. Uh, for 2019 and newer, they've redesigned the dash, made it a heck of a lot harder uh, to get into the wiring back behind the dash. So we're gonna walk you through the whole process. Go ahead and do so very carefully. So we got that panel popped off there. Okay, those are three clips held on there. Once that's out of the way, you have a, I think it's a T, T20 torque fit. Go ahead and remove that. Okay, so we're done on this side here. Ultimately, this panel will just pop on out, just like so. So now we're gonna to head to the other side and do the same thing. That is so difficult to get off. But once it's off, next one, pop your club box down here. Okay, so. Now we have three screws across the bottom. Again, all T20s. Now over here on your steering column, we need to separate this. Again, just using a panel tool here. You can just work on getting this separated. Just like so. So once that's nice and loose, at this time, we're about ready to now finish prying this off. So, Slow and careful. Pop this panel out. There 
and it comes free. All right, so at this point, um, there are uh, two clips on each side, bottom and top, that we need to release using certain keys for Volkswagen. So we'll these Volkswagen style um, radio removal tools. All right, so there is clips one, two, three, four that you just have to release to get this on out. Once that's on out, you can actually go ahead and disconnect your harnesses here. Now we don't really need to disconnect too much because really all we're trying to do is get into the speaker wire harness here. We're gonna pull back the tape just a little bit so we can just strip the wire just a hair and tap into it for signal and reassemble the radio and that's really it so we don't need to do a whole lot all right so we ran our wire up and up and over and we'll show you how we did that here in a second but essentially here with this out we need to just tap into our speaker wires well, our speaker wires are located in this tan um, socket here. So looking on the backhand side, what I'm going to do is over this video here, show you a picture of the pinout on what's positive and what's negative on this. You can either tap into both front right and left speakers or the rear right and left speakers. What we're going to do in this install is the rear right and left speakers. This doesn't have a factory amplifier in it, so there's no true built-in crossovers except bass roll off from the radio so it doesn't really matter if you do fronts or the rears the way that we're doing this is basically here i have so a wire wire stripper here and we get right there in the wire and we're going to separate the wire just like so and then what i'm going to do is use a pick tool Use the pick tool and push through that wire. And what that's gonna do is create a little hole here. And then with my wire stripped through that hole and then wrap it around like so. And then we wrap the wire around the factory wiring here. Now at this point, if you are comfortable, you can actually quickly solder those just so that it's a nice solid connection and it won't come loose in the dash. Um, and then what we do at this point is wrap those connections in electrical tape and then we're going to reloom the harness in more Tessa tape and basically reinstall everything. Okay, so we soldered and then um, wrapped our connections in electrical tape. Our purpose here was not to break the wire, but just to tap into it. We don't want to compromise the factory wiring. Um, it's just a little easy way to go ahead and tap into this. You can also pick up a T harness from Axis that they usually use for their DSP modules. Um, that's a really quick and easy way to build a T harness to quickly tap in. Totally your call. At this time, we're gonna wrap this harness once again in the factory felt Tessa tape and get our radio reinstalled, get the negative back on the battery, and test our system. Okay, so we got the dash all back together here. Now, when we ran this wire up, we actually pulled this side panel off, which held on the three clips, and ran our wire up, and then straight across, there's a passage that you can do so, and it goes right up to the radio. Okay, everything's all done. Got everything tuned up here. Sub's all installed. We're using an NVX 12 inch sub. That's about it.
If you have any questions about what we did here, go ahead and post a comment below. Thanks, guys, for watching the channel. Appreciate the support. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.